An another question was, uh, how long should the testimony be? Um, I wouldn't, uh, for everybody watching and for everybody in this group, I wouldn't get caught up in like, like specific timing of things. It really doesn't uh, matter. You know, I've had clients who are parents uh, testify in their custody trials for, um, you know, I've had parents testify for less, you know, less than like maybe less than an hour, maybe like 40, 45 minutes. And I've had parents testify for like hours. Um, so really it's going to depend on whatever your issues are. Um, and you want to make sure that your testimony is all either relevant um, to the, well, they all have to be relevant to those issues, but it's going to be relevant, favorable evidence, or it's going to be anything relevant that will take the steam out of what, um, what the other side is going to say. You'll, you'll see in my, uh, in my videos, I kind of mentioned about taking the sting out of stuff, meaning like if there's something bad, like if you have a criminal record or something like that and you get to testify first, you want to, hi Brandy, you want to actually bring that up first. Um, so that's, that's another thing, uh, favorable evidence, anything to take the sting out and anything to rebut if they've already testified and you want to like rebut some stuff, you don't need to rebut everything, rebut like the most important stuff. Um, in one of my webinars, I give the example of if you had two jars and um, you had uh, like bigger, bigger uh, rocks, uh, smaller little pebbles, and then sand. And you had to, you had to fill both of those jugs, but in the one jug, you put the sand first and then tried to put the little stones in the rocks. You wouldn't be able to get them in because the stones and the rocks wouldn't fit because there'd be all sand. But in the other one, you started with the big rocks and then the little stones like pebbles and then the sand, you'd get more in. And it's the same way with custody cases with the, the, the jars being your cases and the, the stones and the rocks and the sand being the evidence. The rocks being the bigger pieces of relevant evidence, the important stuff. The stones being the like kind of like, you know, eh, like may or may not be relevant. And then the sand stuff, it's basically just like bickering back and forth between the parents or grandparents about shit that doesn't even matter. So your biggest thing is to make sure that you're going to have time and you're going to have um, the, you know, the wherewithal, I guess, to make sure that you're hitting those big rocks first. Cause that's the most important stuff. Um, the rest of the stuff, it turns into like white noise to the court. You know, if you're just going up there and complaining back and forth, it's like the court observing two kids fighting and you know trying to facilitate a, de a, a decision and what they're probably going to do is try to do something that's fair that doesn't you know that isn't what either party asked for so you're better off just sticking to your guns like the big stuff um, but timing doesn't matter it's just as long as you can get that stuff in you want to tell the story you want to you want to be um, you want to tell the story to the judge uh, of who you are and what what the situation is uh, witness Witness orders, like who you should call and when you should call them. Um, I, I talk about in the videos and you guys will see that during your testimony and during your witness lineup, um, what they hear first, uh, they rem what they hear first, they remember best and what they hear last, they remember first. Okay. So the first thing and the last thing are the most important. So when you put a witness on the stand, the first, you want to start with something important. Obviously, you, when you go on the stand, you want to start with your name, your address, who you live with, like that sort of stuff. But whenever you get into like the real nuts and bolts, you want, to, you want something important to be first. And then you want to close with something important because that's what they remember first. And it goes the same along the lines of witness calling the witness order. So if you're testifying in your case, which you should be, because otherwise you're not really going to be able to prove much, you want to either testify first or last. Um, and then like, if you have another important witness, say there's like a medical expert, you want them to either be first or last. Um, or if there's some observation witness that observes something really, really bad, if it's something bad, I would probably put them more last, you know, I don't, I wouldn't want to ever open with a bad, I'd want to open with like, here's why we're the freaking best and we should win. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so I hope that answers that question. Uh, there was a question about cross-examination. Uh, how do you build up someone 
so well to break them down. Um, and how do I not fall for that on my on my end? I talk about check out that video in cross examination, and it sounds like by that question that you already did, and you're just kind of asking me to follow up on it, which is cool. But for those new people or those people that haven't seen it, check out that video about cross examination because cross examination was like my favorite th one of my favorite things about practicing law. Cross examination and closing. Um, and the way that you do it is you want to do it in along the lines of like basically to build them up before you break them down is you want to get them in the habit of like, cause like, let's face it when some, when you're doing a cross examination or where you're getting cross examined, you're, you're going to want to basically, uh, say no and criticize everything that the attorney's asking you or your witness is going to be wanting to say no to everything you're asking them. Right. So you want to ask questions that are get them to say yes. All right. And it, and it can be simple questions. Like my example, I think I give it in the video. If not, I'll give it here. But my example was always with police officers. <clears throat> say that say that uh, a police officer or say a medical expert, let's just say a medical expert, um, you know, uh, made a mistake. Right. Well, you're not going to want to jump right into them making a mistake. You're going to want to and it has to be a glaring mistake. Um, and, and the, 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 the example I use with the police officer, it's same with the medical expert. Like I would always say like, um, you know, uh, Sergeant so-and-so or whatever, you've been on a police force for 20 years. Yes, I have. And through your 20 years, you've uh, undergone significant training to be a police officer. Yes, I have. And prior to being a police officer, you went through specific training to be a police officer. Yes, I have. And I'm sure you went through the police academy and yes I have and I'm sure you got great training there too yes I have and you're built that's how you're building them up you're building them up um, and you're getting them to say yes but it doesn't have to be like necessarily a build up but it has to be a thing where you're and I, I hope I'm explaining this well it has to be a way in a way that they think you're just basically being conversational you know what I mean um, I don't know like well Right now, you you have primary physical custody right now. Yes, I do. And you've um, you're aware that you know you have all the ac all access to schooling. Yes, I do. Um, and you you have had the chance to, chance to you know see see so and so's homework. Uh, yes, I have. And you've been able to help them with that homework. Yes, I have. So they're thinking like, yeah, hell yeah, like I'm you know I'm the shit. And then you can slam them down with like. You know, you do realize that they haven't completed their homework in like two days. Uh, and then that way, if they say like, no, that's not true. Be like, well, you just said you're involved in it. And here's the freaking sheet that shows their assignments are all incomplete. Um, or you realize that you do know that they haven't gone to school um, X in amount of days this semester. Or you realize that they're failing English. You know, so you get, you build them up. Like they don't see that coming, what you're trying to do to them. That's better than just saying, um, well, Johnny is, is uh, late for school, has been late for school 15 times this year. And he's, and you're the one that had custody of him, right? They're going to be like, exp they're going to explain it away. But if you say you've had primary physical custody, yes, I have. And you've had, and according to the current order, you've had custody on uh, this Tuesday and Tuesday through Thursday. Yes, I have. And according to the order, you've had custody on this Tuesday and Thursday through Thursday. Yes, I have. And according to the custody order, you've had custody this Tuesday and Thursday. Yes, I have. And during that time, you're the primary custodian, correct? Yes, I am. And it's your, it's your job to ensure that they get to school. Yes, it is. Because you're the only one that's caring for them at that time, right? Yes, yes, that's true. Tell me why the they've been late for school nine out of those twelve days while they're in your care. You you pigeonhole them. You put them in a position where they just admitted that like they're the shit and they're the one in charge, but they effed up and they're not taking a damn kid to school. That's just one example. I hope that makes sense. But that's like the whole goal. For you pro se people, and then for you people that are, are pro se as well, but also for you people that are represented when you're on the stand, be ready for that. It's not that you don't, you don't have to be like, excuse my language, you don't have to be a dick to the attorney, 
But like, be ready for that, that they might be setting you up for something. And it's okay, you gotta be honest, you can't lie, but you wanna at least be ready to, be, to get hit over the head with something so you can dodge out of the way and explain yourself. And it's okay to explain yourself. Uh, uh, an effective, sorry, I was getting a call. Um, an effective cross-examination is gonna get you to stick to yes and no answers. However, if you can, and if you need to, explain it. And the, a custody case is so important that I think an explanation is warranted, especially if it's something important. So if you start to get cut off, um, if, you're, if you start to get cut off by the attorney that's cross-examining you, and either you don't have an attorney or your attorney's not doing his, his, his or her job to let you answer, just simply ask the judge, like, Your Honor, can I explain this? Like, Your Honor, I think this is important. Can I explain it? And if the judge says no, that's fine, um, because what you can do then is explain it on redirect. Okay? So that's what you want to watch for. If you're getting built up and then beat down and you want to, like, explain something, but then they don't give you the time or you want to tell the judge that it's freaking bullshit, but they don't let you because they don't want you to talk out of order, then just keep a mental note of it. And if your attorney doesn't want to do a redirect because they're either not good at what they do or they weren't paying attention or they forgot or whatever, um, you know, maybe you can just say like, uh, your honor, can I, can I give her a redirect or attorney so-and-so can I, like, can I give a redirect now? Or if you're pro se, just give a redirect. But you just have to be aware that the redirect has to be based on what was said during cross-examination. Okay? I hope that all makes sense. I try to um, I try to explain it to you knowing that a lot of you guys are kind of just getting into this stuff. Some of you guys that have been in this group for a while, you, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but I hope that I hope that helps everybody on here because that kind of this kind of stuff is very, very important. 